It's just not fair. <laughs> Think back to your earliest childhood. How many times a day did you say that? <laughs> now maybe you don't say it so often now. But I bet you still think it. <laughs> because it's just not fair comes out of, I think, an entitlement mentality. An entitlement mentality is a mentality that is not looking at really what we get and how grateful we are for it, but we're looking over our shoulders at somebody else who we think is getting more than they deserve. Isn't the whole immigration issue based on people thinking that these undocumented people are coming here and taking away our jobs and our money? It's just not fair. Now, there are some things where it's not fair are really legitimately issues of social justice. It is not fair that women and men who do exactly the same work, men earn more than women do. That's a social justice issue. It's not fair that people who are white, which is most of us, earn more than people of color for doing the same thing. That is a social justice issue. But the two readings we have today, Jonah and Matthew, speak more to an entitlement mentality. Now, when we were little kids, when we directed our it's just not fair rhetoric at somebody, it was usually at our parents. <laughs> because they were the ones that dispensed unfairness, so we thought. <laughs> and maybe it was teachers, although we had to be a little more careful about it because teachers could send us to the principal's office. Or it could be our bosses later on in life. Or more often, whether we said it or not, it was directed at God. And that's really the context for the first reading from Jonah. Jonah is compiled as one of the minor prophets. It is not at all like any of the other minor prophets. All of the other minor prophets are collections of sayings, of speeches, of prophets who were sent to give a message to a group of people. The only similarity between Jonah and all of those is that at the very beginning, God says to Jonah, go to Nineveh and I'll tell you what to say. That's it. The rest of it is a story. A parable, if you wish. Don't take it literally. There's no big fish. There's no sitting in the stomach of a fish for three days and being regurgitated. It's a parable. So Nineveh. What was Nineveh in the time that this was written? You remember reading about or hearing about the Assyrian Empire? It was the dominant empire during the time that the northern kingdom, the kingdom of Israel, existed. And they were ruthless. And they came and destroyed the northern kingdom and took out all of the people of that land. Then it was the enemy. And so here's Jonah told to go and preach to them. No wonder he got a boat and went the other way. He didn't want to have anything to do with preaching to those people. They're our enemies. <coughs> he has a little episode. He has a con 
conversion experience, and he does go reluctantly. And amazingly, the people of Nineveh listen to his word. And they repent in sackcloth and ashes, we're told in the story. Everybody does it, including the king and the animals. Imagine the animals in sackcloth and ashes. <laughs> Jonah is not happy. It's just not fair. He doesn't quite say those words, but it's basically a God, these are our enemies. You should be raining down fire on them. We've heard a little bit about that in the news, haven't we? Some people in power who want to rain down fire on the enemies. And then we have this marvelous episode at the end where Jonah sits and watches what's going to happen. And there's the gourd story. And in the second time in that short little book, God says to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry? And Jonah says, yes, I'm so angry I want to die. Is that not an entitlement story or a story about it's just not fair? So the anger that Jonah has is towards God because God is not doing what God should be doing which is destroying the people of Nineveh. So a different slant on the same thing, if you wish, is the parable in Matthew. It begins with the words, the kingdom of heaven is like. You've heard that before? Mm -hmm. Actually, ten times, in the Gospel of Matthew, most of them in chapter 13, but several other places, that phrase comes out. So what is the kingdom of heaven according to Matthew? Now, you all grew up knowing the Bible, right? When you think of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, what do you think of? Pie in the sky, by and by? <laughs> right? It's what's going to happen to us when we die. But that's not how Matthew envisioned his use of the kingdom of heaven. His use of the kingdom of heaven from Jesus was, it's here, it's now. In fact, the Gospel of Matthew begins very right at the early part when John the Baptist begins his ministry and he says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then in just another chapter or two later, Jesus begins the same ministry. The kingdom of heaven, from Matthew's perspective, is about how heaven's kingdom is different from the earthly kingdom. And so this parable is about that difference. In the earthly kingdom, what we think of as fair, what our economic system, political system says is, if you're clever, if you work hard, you should accumulate stuff. And the more stuff you accumulate, the more it says you are, you are working hard, you are clever, you're good. You know how to, to invest properly. You know, isn't that the mantra that we live in? But the kingdom of heaven is different. It's all based on what these people didn't like is equality. In the Lord's Prayer, what do we pray? Give us today our daily bread. Don't give us the bread for tomorrow or for next week or next month. Give us today our daily bread. It's based on the Old Testament story of manna. You know that story, right? 
When the people went out and collected the manna, they collected enough for the day. And if they hoarded it, what happened to it? It didn't come. It got stinky. It was not good. They collected enough for the day. Give us today our daily bread. This parable is based on sufficiency. So the first workers who come, maybe it might not be different than migrant laborers, the people who work in our fields collecting fruit and vegetables, and we want to send them all back home, they go and they work for a day's wage. It's sufficient. And the other workers that come at 9 and at 12, at 3 and even at 5, all get a day's wage. Enough to live on. Give us today our daily bread. But the first group, the entitlement group, and we can imagine the ones at 9 o'clock and noon and 3 had the same sort of angst, it's just not fair. We've been here working hard all day long. We should be getting more. And then the punchline at the very end of it, the owner says, are you angry? Remember Jonah? Because I am generous. Kingdom of heaven is about God's generosity. It's not about how we earn it. It's given to us. It's a gift, and it's sufficient. It's a parable that turns the world upside down, the world that we know, the world we live in, the world we strive for. It's a different kind of a world because it's a world based on grace rather than achievement. So, I challenge you to look at these other parables, you can search them out, in Matthew, which says the kingdom of heaven is like. And they're all different. They all give different nuances about what the kingdom of heaven, the one we live in here now, is like and how it is different from the world that is dominated by the present <coughs> economic political systems. Amen.